Hello and welcome to 2023 Safety Stand Down. My name is Chad Lingerfell. I'm the National Training Manager here at Warner Co. Here at Warner Co. you can see safety is in everything that we do. Safety above all. Safety is in our DNA. When it comes to partnerships, you partner with us, we'll partner with you and do the best we can for you in training. When he looks at innovation, innovation comes standard. One of the key things here at Warner Co., we want everyone to go home at the end of the day. That's why we're so passionate about safety and training. So once again here at Warner Co., when we think about mental health, there's a lot going on every day on the job site. So it's okay not to be okay, but maybe not, don't need to be climbing today. So there's a new telephone number out there you might not know about, it's 988. When it comes to the lifeline to those who might need someone to talk to, so please, if you don't know anything about it, research it a little bit. So here at Warner Co., OSHA Top 10, we take very seriously also. As you can see, number one on the OSHA Top 10 is fall protection. It's been number one since 1997, all but one year, and that's the year that HASCOM came out. As you can see, number four and number five are ladder and scaffolding, and number eight is why we're here today, is talk about training, ensuring people go home. Once again, we can help you with this, and later today in the slide presentation at the end, we'll talk about how you can sign up for safety training, and we come to you. Once again, we're, we're talking about fall protection, and we're talking about the A, B, C, Ds, and Es of fall protection. But as you can see on this slide here, Warnerco has the breadth of line when it comes to uh, the A, B, C, which is the anchor, body harness, connecting, D, descent, and rescue is what we're all about here when it comes to uh, the chair in the air, and we're going to introduce a new product to you today, and then safety training, helping those who don't know the uh, current situation of the new ANSI standard. We're going to talk about that today. On this slide here, you can see the hierarchy of fall protection. Number one, we always, but always want to try to eliminate. Uh, this next slide shows you here, in the past, many of you, as you go down the highway, you see these every day. You see them at the interstates, the intersections, these 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 foot uh, lights out there. We used to have to take and rent different things or climb the pole and go to the light. Now we're bringing the light to us. That's eliminating the hazard. I encourage you to think about on your job site on a daily basis, you're probably walking by something that could be eliminated, but in our mindset, we've always done it this way, so we'll continue to do that. Number two, talking about passive fall protection. When you look at this, you can see the guardrails here around the top of this building. That would be passive, not allowing you to get to the edge. Now next, we'll talk about active fall protection, whether that would be travel restraint or fall arrest or fall protection, which many people look at at. This next slide shows you, we can see the person not being able to get to the uh, restraint, the travel restraint on the right side. And then on the left side, you can see the person actually able to get to the edge and fall over, uh, which would fall in over the edge. So when we look at this, think about uh, a dog leash to the right there. Someone walking their dog and that not allowing that dog to get past wherever they want to be. That's what travel restraint is. But the other one is when someone's working on the edge and they have to be on the edge, this would be active fall protection or active fall arrest. And then here's a, two more pictures. You can see on the left, you can see the guy hooked up on top of an I-beam here. That means he could take a fall left or right. And then the guy on the right is, is, is restrained by the system there and the rope system he's attached to, not allowing him to get to the edge of that roof. Last but not least here before we move on, inspection. As we, as we go across the U.S. and do training, uh, 115 trainers every day doing training across the U.S., we see this is one of the biggest issues is inspecting. When we say inspect, we, say, we mean all fire protection, not just your harness. We're talking about your, whatever you're connecting with, your anchor points you're connecting into. Make sure you always inspect these prior to use and every time. A, B, C, Ds, and Es of fall protection. This here at Warner Co., this is what we're all about. A being anchor, B being body harness, C being your connecting device, which is SRLs, and we're going to talk a lot about today on the new ANSI standard. D is for descent and rescue, getting someone down. Sometimes we make this way more complicated than it needs to be. And E, education is what we're doing here today. Anchor point. Anchor point is so important. Whatever we're connecting into, whether that be the I-beam on top of a building or a trust or whatever that might be, 
When you look at this next slide, when we say the 5,000 pounds is very important. Many of you all have heard over and over and over out there, taking your uh, truck that you drove to work today or whatever that truck is you're working in, et cetera, F-150, Chevy, Dodge, whatever it may be you're driving, taking that truck, hanging it above you and being, feeling safe to be able to work on it. That's what you need to be connecting into as you see the gentleman connecting here into the uh, above beam here. Also, many different types of anchors. When we look at anchors, we think sometimes a one does all. It's not the case. We have concrete anchors, we have steel anchors, we have wood anchors. So making sure we have the correct anchor, and once again, we have a team of over 115 that can come out and help you choose the right anchor. Once again, anchor location is so important. When we talk about the harness and the body harness in the back, specifically that back D-ring, everything falls and rises on that back D-ring. As you can see in the left here, the anchor points level with the back D-ring. The center of the picture here, you see the anchor below the actual back D-ring, which we're going to talk a lot about today. And then the last one there, which is the best location, is above. We always want to use the above location for anchorage point when we can. Body harness, holding device. This is very important, as you know, and it's the want it to be extremely comfortable because it's something we're going to be wearing a lot of when we're on the job sites. Many of you out there wear it from the time you go to work to the end of the day. We understand that. So making it fit and making it stay in adjustment is very important. As we look and we walk through the slides here, we see the body harness and the benefits of the body harness. But also here at Warnerco, when we started, we started with the fall in mind and worked our way back. As you can see the gentleman to the right there in the picture, the, it's a pretty... Uh, obvious that it's a different type of harness and it's specifically for here at Warner Co. And is, we want to make sure that if someone does take a fall, that we get, they go home at the end of the day. All right, so the left here, you can see the uh, trauma straps. Many of you are known them. Some of you call them hockey pucks. That's the center picture of the guy standing in those hockey pucks or that trauma straps. I really encourage you, if this is what you're using for a part of your rescue plan, that you train on these. This is not just something you can take. If you can imagine you're just taking a fall, first of all, you're going to be a little bit dazzled. But then you're going to have to take those trauma straps, unstrap them, connect them, have them in the right part, have them in the right section for you to stand on, the right length. All that needs to be practiced ahead of time. But here at Warnico, we try to take that out of this equation and goes directly to the chair in the air, which only takes seconds, which we'll show you later today. And when we look at that chair in the air and we think about that, think about sitting in the air and waiting for someone to rescue. At the same time, you think about that, that takes the chaos out of this equation. If someone's just fallen, they're standing up there and they have the femoral artery has been cut off and they have a, they're getting started to get confused, it's hurting, they're screaming, you can imagine what everybody's on the ground doing. It's creating that chaos. Once again, here at Warner Co. with the chair in the air, our, our job is to take that chaos, and our goal was to take that chaos out of the issue and the situation. So now we're going to inspect our harness. As we talked previously to today, you must inspect everything before you use it. So we're going to do a walk down. We're going to start in the front and walk down the harness. We're going to check the tags, make sure Everything is good to go in the labels, making sure there's no recalls, etc. That's what the label main thing there is for. Uh, making sure all of there's no uh, defects in the harness whatsoever. The good thing about our harnesses and our when we look at the harness in the actual webbing, we actually have red sewn into the webbing. If there's a cut or a tear in the webbing, this red will show through. And if that red shows through, as we say here at Warnerco, it's red, it's dead. You see red, it's dead. You take it out of service. So once again, we're making sure there's no rust, etc. There's a lot more, and if you go to warnerco.com and pull down the inspection form, you can see that there. As before we even put the harness on, which is another big deal here that we really need to think about, everything must come out of our pockets. Everything. Keys. Think about our keys. Think about this being across your leg and snapping your leg as you take a fall that key punching you or that knife or that sharp object in your, in your pocket. Number two, phones. Think about the phone laying against your leg, against the strap and it going down and that glass cracking. And when that glass cracks, it heats up, burning your leg, cutting your leg, etc. So please remove all items from your pocket before 
going up in any situation. Now we're going to take the time and show you the chair in the air demo. Now we've done our inspection. We have emptied our pockets, making sure there's nothing in our pockets. Now we're going to make our way to the tripod, and Kendall's going to lift me up. And as you can see, as I'm lifting myself, I'm still able to talk, but I'm starting to feel the pressure here in my legs. And then I'm going to simply reach back, grab the handles, lift my knees, keep them together, and slide into the chair in the air. And that all takes less than 10 seconds, as you can see here as we demo. When we started today, we started talking about innovation. Now we've came to our 2.0 switch point here at Warner Co. The key thing with this harness and the new design is you'll see the D-ring is in the front on the picture of the right. So what happens, actually, you pull a cord on the side of your, of your uh, harness here, and when that happens, the actual harness will, the back D-ring will actually come across the shoulder and end up in the front, as you can see on the picture on, on the right here, which allows you to help self-rescue yourself. When I say self-rescue, someone's dropping something down to you, you can actually physically attach, et cetera, as long as you was not hurt in the fall. Now, let's take a quick look at the switch point in action. Werner, the brand that launched Share in the Air is revolutionizing fall protection and post-fall safety once again. Introducing the Proform SP harness with switch point technology. A new harness designed specifically for experienced, top-tier professionals. Engineered with innovative safety features and manufactured with precision craftsmanship. Athletic design for all-day comfort, made with fabrics that breathe and conform to your body. The patented switch point technology delivers fast, simple, share in the air activation in the event of a fall. When activated, the dorsal D-ring switches from the back to the front for easier access. Suspended workers will experience unmatched freedom of movement for improved rescue operations. The new Proform SP from Werner. Higher level of safety for higher level of work. Now that we've demoed the body harnesses, we'll go to our next, which is C, connecting devices, which could be lanyards, SRLs, etc. When you look at the big picture here, when we we're thinking over the last two years, specifically since June 2021, when the new standard for ANSI came out, that's the slide you're seeing in front of you now, when this came out, everything really improved when it comes to thinking about how we connect people. So when we look, look at the left there, it's just a card. If you can take the time, please, to read that later. But that's required to come in all uh, Class two retractables going. And then you can see in the center there the different colors and the backdrops for Class one, Class two. But the main thing I want to talk to you today is about Class one and Class two. And earlier I said today we talked about everything falls and rises on the back D-ring. As you can see to the left of the picture in the right there, the blue to the sky, here at Wernico, we actually physically did that. We made ours blue, so you, uh, when we think about class one, above the D-ring, that's where you're tying off to. Once again, going back to several slides ago when we talked about where you're tying, when you, that line going across the page there, the back of the person with the D-ring, everything, I cannot stress this enough, everything rises and falls on that D-ring. So class one above, and to the, to the right, class two, is above and below. But the key thing here, many of you keep asking the question about leading edge. When you think about leading edge, that is a class two. When you're tying off below that D-ring, and that's one of the most important things that we can get across to you today here on this slide. This page just simply breaks down class one and class two. Uh, just remember, class A does not equal class one, class B does not equal class two, and leading edge. So keep it real simple, class one, is above the D-ring only, with limitations to above only. Class two can actually do a below and above and leading edge. So remember when you're buying, if you even think you might come in contact with anything, as you can see on this next picture here, leading edge. So when we talk about leading edge and coming in contact with any edge is here at Warner Co., please take the time and understand any edge, even if you're tying off above or below, make sure you have a class two. On this slide here, it's, just keep it simple, as you can read most of the slides yourself, but we want to talk about two things. Our label protection for our SRLs, the actual 
label is indented, and when I say that, about an eighth of an inch to keep protected, and that's one of the biggest issues we find on job sites is a label being damaged and messed up. So, in the other part here, I want you to understand at Warnerco, the ANSI standard only requires you to test it against steel. Here at Warnerco, we have a lot of concrete contractors we talk to all the time. We test against concrete, B decking, and steel. So those three substrates is very important to us in ensuring our people go home at the end of the day. Descent and rescue. As we talk about this, and as we go across, as I mentioned that 115 trainers again across the U.S., as we look at that, one of the biggest things we see that we can improve on as contractors and as employees across the U.S. is having some type of rescue plan. Rescue plan is very important. And we've got to know if someone takes a fall, can we simply take an extension ladder and get that person down? Or as you can see in this picture to the right, you can see the rescue ladder. It's an 18-foot ladder that you can actually hook into the actual tile point they're tying off to and drop down to them. They can either climb back up if they're able to, to the next level, or try maybe climb down to the, the lower level. Very important, please remember, think ahead and think how you're going to get that person down if they do take a fall. Last but not least, education. We believe here at Warner Co. education is one of the most important things we can do for you, our customer, and, our, and the people that we want to see go home at the end of the day. So I'm not going to read all these today's about ladders, but this is seven of the issues that we see. Choosing the right ladder, making sure you inspect it, understanding where you're going, how you're getting up, how you're getting down, but please take your time, pick the right one. We've mentioned training multiple times today. How you accomplish that, go to Warner Co dot com, go to safety, and there's multiple options there, on site, online, etc. So please take the time if you need training to do that, and we'd love to come out and train your people. Remember, going home at the end of the day is one of the most important things we can do for our employees. Thank you for joining us here today for safety training. Have a great day.